Hello YouTube, Tim here and I've started another project. This one is going to be a takedown brave bow. It's not going to have the reflex deflex since I need it to fit into a fairly small space. It needs to be compact and kind of handy. But this is what I have. What I've done over the course of the day is I went over with pencil. You can just see the outline of the design right there. Let me see if I can bring it in. You can see it a little better. But the point is I thought I'd show you what I'm doing next. This was the, the basic pattern for the design. You can find this on DeviantArt, and I just used this as an inspiration for the knot work that I did. Then, I'm taking... Whoops, sorry for me moving you. Okay. Then I take a Sharpie, in this case, and I'm just going over the outline, careful to preserve the order of which strands are on the tops, which are on the bottom, so on and so forth. So, you know, as far as I'm able, I just want to trace everything exactly as it should be. This just gives me an idea of exactly what I'm going to be painting precisely, not just in general terms. I don't want to make it up as I'm going along. I want to really have an idea of exactly which lines are going to be on top of the others and so on and so forth. It gets complicated with these Celtic knots when... Well, take a look. Over, under, over, under, over, under. And you've got to keep track of all this stuff. So it's easy to make a slip up and a mistake, and you just don't want to have to deal with that if you don't have to. So insofar as I'm able, I want to go ahead and remove the possibility of me making a mistake later on by going ahead and doing as good of a job as I can right now prepping it. Not only will the black serve as a little bit of an outline, because I think I'm gonna, I, I want to leave that as much as I'm able to provide a bit of contrast, but I thought first I'll go over with either a white or a light brown, and then I'll go over it with a darker brown in certain areas, again to layer it on and add a little bit more contrast. When I'm finally done, I'll usually go in and I'll take some of the colors that I've used, add a little bit of white or black to them to change them a touch, and then highlight and use them as uh, use them for a little bit of contrast there. Yeah, this is really, really hard to see if you're not looking at the right angle. But it is pretty darn cool looking. I don't think I need to show the entire process of outlining. I'll just finish the bear's face and then I'll let you see that. And then you can go and just decide what you think of this technique, if you like it. Of course, use it if you don't. Do something different. There are so many ways to make something cool. This is just what works for me. I like starting with pencil since then I can erase it. Continuing with Sharpie, it's a lot more permanent so you want to be careful. And then finishing up with the actual paint which you can use to then just correct any mistakes with the Sharpie and so on and so forth. But you you want to try and minimize them, obviously. That's funny. It didn't want to feed ink there. Okay, that's pretty good. So there you go. You get the idea of what I'm doing. Now it's a lot more visible. I'm just going to continue that throughout the whole pattern on both limbs. So thanks for watching. Oh, yikes! If I kick the camera anymore, you're going to start getting uh, nauseated. So I better call it quits for now. And I'll show you the finished design when I'm done. And then we can do a little paint along. Here we have the before and after, so to speak. Here I've gone over my pencil drawing with both the Sharpie and then when the Sharpie stopped working it might have gotten gummed up I'm not sure with the the shoe polish that could be either way I finished it off with some black paint so one way or another we have the full design all drawn out then this is what I'm doing this is step one before I fill in just not really too dramatic but a nice light brown in the open areas there 
Looks pretty cool, yeah? I think so. So I'm just going to walk you through how to go from this to this, or at least in my way. So starting off, let me see if I can get you nice and close and low to the, uh, to the table here. And I'll try and do the, the work right on the very corner. So again, there's the one that I did. Here's the one that I'm doing. Let's try and get you a front row seat. Okay. So I've got a brush. Take a look at the brush. It's very fine. It's small. Now that's loaded with paint. So it's a pretty fine tip. You'll see as I go along. To start, all I'm doing is I'm just barely touching and lining all the edges like that. Go back frequently and recharge the, the brush and you can fill in more and more as you go along. Eventually you will fill in the entire area. Just remember as soon as you pick up paint you're usually gonna leave a pretty heavy dab of, of paint. So just be careful not to completely cover up whatever design you had. You can always go back and paint over it later to fix it, but it's easier just to not make the mistakes in the first place. So see here, it's really heavily loaded, and so the instant I touch it more than just a bare hint, it's just going to start dumping paint, which is pretty cool, pretty much what we want it to do. I'm going to start edging it towards the top around the eye because there actually is a lot of paint left in here that I'm not using I just like it near the tip so then I can get that first big swath of nice thick paint so that I can edge it just really easily starting off there not near the mouth let's go down there All right, so now, right here I have some teeth that I want to just, I'm not going to fill them in, I'm just going to make two little marks there, just a hint of teeth, right? Now watch, if I continue down here without loading up again, I can still make a line, but it's really a faint line, and it's a thin line. So I'm going to charge it so I can continue making the paint nice and thick. You can probably just do two coats, stuff like that, but I'm choosing to make one nice, really thick coat. Bottom part of the jaw. Up tooth, up tooth. Perfect. to the back of the bear's neck some down here let me charge it up again okay good so we're almost done with the the main head of the bear Since you're never really done, since it's a knot, almost all the lines are interconnected at one point or another. You, you can just choose to stop wherever you'd like and say, yeah, I've, I've done enough. I tend to go to the first crossing. So for instance, I'll follow this line down like so to the point where it crosses another line. Un uh, underneath, that is. So it's just a good, nice, natural point to stop. If you move the brush a little faster when it's fully loaded, you can get a thinner line, but it'll still be nice and thick and, uh, and yeah, just a good, solid line. Okay, so now let's go back and fill in those areas that we, we didn't. Now you'll notice... Let's see how well you can see this. Not too bad. I'm going to try and lower you a little bit more get you even closer okay and we've already seen this so let's just move this aside and move this in okay 
So there's something I wanted to show you about spreading paint. Just a little tip I had. You can go in and fill in like this, but be careful not to overspread the paint, because when you spread it, the brush is going to tend to catch paint and move it, rather than just filling it evenly. So, let's see if we can see some here. Okay, I'm just going to keep on swirling, swirling, spreading. You see those strokes showing up right there? I don't want those. I don't think they look good. So just go back, charge the brush more, and you can just fill in that whole area. Now, since the paint is still fairly fluid, some of those gaps and just uneven spots will close up on their own, but I'd rather not make them in the first place. So I just keep going back, charging the brush. And filling in the spots. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, get to the eye. Just do it in the center like so. See? Not bad. And to be honest with you, sometimes I find that I haven't filled in the spots, but since I'm working from the outside in, it leaves these gaps there. And I think that looks pretty cool. Because there are other gaps. That wasn't planned, but it looks good. So I'm going to leave that there. Just like on this limb, I left a gap right there. I thought it looked good. I don't know. It just it felt right and it looked good. So just do what feels right. And if you're happy with what you're doing, cool. I keep saying that sort of a thing. So, And I'm not just talking to myself. Believe me. I understand how some people can be perfectionists. And believe me, with some things I am. You'll notice I'm not so picky with my PVC weapons usually because um, they're toys to me. This is something different. This is something that I take pride in that I want to do well. And if I'm not both hard enough on myself to do a good job and simultaneously forgiving of my mistakes, I just wouldn't even bother trying in the first place, I'm sure. Okay, now for the claws, you see how they taper? The claws taper in these little fine points. So start near the base and lift the brush as you move towards the point. If you want, you can use, just be very careful and work the paint into the tip. That looks pretty good. Now we can work down from there into the hand. The arm, rather. Great. And so now it's just picking points and just working your way down. Or up, or left, right. You don't have to have a particular pattern, rhyme, reason. You can skip around. Let's start here, for instance. I like to work sequentially just because it gives me a better idea of how I'm progressing. Plus that way if by the time you get farther along your old paint's probably dried so that you don't smudge it or get it on your hands. So that's just something to think about. But this paint I'm using is acrylic. It dries fairly fast. Let's just go back and complete this section and just keep moving along, chugging, chugging, chugging. At first it doesn't look so impressive. The design is really pretty simple, but taken all together, it's really gorgeous, I think. I think it's really nice. One thing I'd suggest is, especially since you're getting paint onto the sides here with these knots, is you should probably not do what I'm doing. You should probably go ahead and do your painting on top of a paper, cardboard, something like that that you don't mind getting all painted up. I'm being extremely careful, and even if I did get some paint on our tablecloth, it is not the nicest, newest tablecloth, so I don't feel altogether bad if I wreck it. Although I'm going to go to great pains not to.
So here we go, moving down. Oh, we're starting to look like something, right? Make sure your paint doesn't dry out on you. Because I noticed that mine's developing a little bit of a film on top, and if I just poke through the film, the paint underneath is plenty liquid and dry, but or and wet, but eventually that's not gonna be the case. You can add it for these paints, they suggest adding a drop of water just to maintain fluidity, and that's fine, that works, I've done that. Just mixing the paints as you're using them will also give you a little bit of extra working time. So as you can tell, this is a pretty painstaking process. But man, to have a bow that's decorated like this is really pretty sweet, so... I'm always pleased if I can do something like this for someone. So there, I mean, how are we coming along? Pretty nice, starting to look really good. And we're not even halfway done with this, so... With the white. And this is after I've already painted in the black. Then I'm gonna have to go back and paint in the brown. You see, this is pretty time consuming. So I wouldn't recommend taking this all at once. I'm going to be doing it all at once just because I have a large chunk of time today. And like I said, the paint, by the time I get done with one part, I can move back to the other limb and paint, yeah. move back and forth like that to make the most out of my time. But if you're just doing this on your own, you're going to get tired, you're going to get bored. Don't, don't push yourself too far, especially not when you're just beginning to paint. Your hands will cramp up something fierce, and that's not really nice. don't want your hands cramping and shaking any more than they have to. Just try and keep your hand nice and loose. Brace it on the table. Brace it on the bow if you can. Just try and maintain nice, long, even strokes. See what I mean about rotating it to paint the sides? So I've also picked up some interesting things along my, uh, my way in the last few weeks. Not so much picked up, but acquired. I'd like to share them with you in a future video. Some stuff from Turkey from Istanbul and I think you'll find them pretty interesting. Something I've noticed with this brush is there are a few strands, a few hairs at the end, fibers that stick out. They don't deposit paint, so I'm not concerned with them too much, but <coughs> I don't know, they just irritate 
me and it seems like it makes it harder to index the the brush to figure out where exactly it's going to touch the surface and that's kind of important when you're doing something like this because you really want to keep track of the brush so you don't start painting outside the lines that you've drawn and really that's what we're doing this, this is just the children's paint by number type design only we're creating the design from the ground up If you're going to create your own Celtic knot, the basic rule seems to be over one, under one, over one, under one. And then you get lots of elements like this knot here. There's some very good tutorials online which can walk you through how to design and draw Celtic knots. This is just a very elaborate version of that which ends in a, uh, in a bear. So, so what did everybody think of the movie Brave? I liked it. It was very different from a lot of the other Disney movies that I've seen, and I thought it was entertaining, to say the least. Scared the heck out of my kid, but, but I liked it. And I think she'll like it in the future. It features, of course, archery, which I think is fantastic. It's one of those movies like The Hunger Games and maybe The Avengers even, featuring archers. I think that can only be good for our hobby. Drums up a lot of good interest. There we go. See, now I'm kind of jumping from one segment to the other just to make sure I get the, the cross hatch, you know, the over under pattern. I don't want to skip one or accidentally paint over when I should be painting under, so on and so forth. If you do, it's not the end of the world. Your design, nobody will probably notice unless they really actually look. Because again, with complex designs, little defects fade away. A person can only perceive so much complexity in the design before they simply perceive the design as a whole. You lose the, the trees for the forest, and that's your friend when you're just simply human when you're not using a mechanical aid like a computer to design it and when you're not using a machine to do the work or you're simply not an expert and you haven't been doing this for 40 40 years of your life so that you know how to turn one out perfectly every time so for those of us who are considered merely mortal Going more complex with your design might be better than simpler, as odd as that might seem. You know, simple is a good way to start, but you'll notice all those little things you do wrong, and other people are more likely to notice them as well. See, that's as loud as my dog gets. No, I'm not feeding you. You've had dinner already, okay? You've had dinner already. You go sit down. I love my dog. And we're almost done. Look at that. So we've already done pretty much the entire bow. Once this is done, like I say, I'm just going to go through the, the exposed wood grain portions and brush on a little light beige or light brown, and that'll be perfect. I'm also running out of paint, so I better uh, pour some more. If anybody's wondering, this is the paint I'm using. It's nothing special. You can use much nicer ones, I'm sure. I'm actually just raiding my wife's paint collection. She's used them for all sorts of art projects, and well, now she's not using them, so I am. 
I've had really good luck with the gold Martha Stewart collection. And so I, if I were going to buy my own paints at this point, I'd probably go and I'd buy some Martha Stewart paints. They might cost a little bit more, but I'm just so happy with it that, you know, stick with what works, right? Nice. Just a few more strokes and we're done. Now aside from accidental and minor variations just in style or in size and angle and so forth, I, these bowl limbs should have pretty much identical patterns. That excepting the changes on the bear's face that I've, I've done in both bows, which I like. Okay, so now one, two, three, three more strokes. Just make sure you fill in the areas, especially near the base of this design. I like the the lines to be a little bit thicker than at the top. Although, if you have some curves like this up the top where they're graceful and they sort of expand a little, I think that's really cool. So there you go. What do you think? Pretty neat? Now I'm going to go ahead and fill in all of the gaps starting with the other limb. And then we can move back here. By the way, if just in case you're wondering, the, the design stops here because I'm going to be wrapping the handle with probably flax at this point. It looks nice. And this side goes inside the other. I might add a loop or two of flax here just to both index to let you know how, when you've inserted the limb far enough, because this is a takedown bow, and it'll also just hide the transition. Welcome back. At this stage, here's what we left with. Looks good, right? Here's what we have now. It's still drying. All I've done is I've gone in. Actually, this spot was not supposed to be painted, so I probably won't do it on the other side, but not a big deal. It still looks awesome. It has just nice brown highlighting. What I'm going to go back and do later is I'm going to go over that with a little bit of lighter brown just on the edges to make it stand out even more. It'll look really cool, but th that's something else entirely. So right now I'm going to do the same thing that I did on that limb on this limb. We have my paint, my brush, and let's just get started. This is much quicker than the outlining process because you're it's basically fill painting. You're not painting so much fine detail. You're you are edging, but it's not quite so much as it was before. Let's just go up here and do a really super careful I'm even going to brush, unload the brush just a touch for this. There you go. I just got a spot of it in that part of that indentation. I don't want to ruin it because it looks awesome. So 
So again, moving into sharp points, I like to start at a rounded area and then lift the brush as I get to the point. So that way you, you get a nice sharp edge. It looks just a lot nicer than if you had rounded it off. So like here's another example right here. So I'll start here, put down the brush, and as you get towards it, you lift. There I lifted too much too rapidly, so you can just use the very tippy tip of the brush to knock it in. Oh, I did it again. See, I tell you, I just want to paint that one spot, which I think is fine. It's not, of course, this is my design, it's fine. But the point is, I think it's especially suitable, because that looks like it's part of the bear. So I'm going to paint it. Edge. Edge. edge and edge and then just fill paint great so you see how much faster this is than doing all that fine detail painting okay, now basically you're filling in all the areas on these swish 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 swish, swish the, the main swirls I don't know what else to call them Just go ahead and follow them all the way down. That's pretty much it. This is one of the easiest parts of the job. I know this would be a lot easier with a stencil, but I gotta say, I like doing stuff like this by hand there's a charm to it because each and every piece is going to end up a little bit different. So you really are making one-of-a-kind works. This is not a factory piece. It's a uh, work of art or artisanship, if you will. Not that I'm saying it's a great work of art or that it's even adequate, but I like it. And I think it's, I do think it's good enough. But again, you know, tastes vary. Tastes are, uh, can't account for them. If you've been enjoying this sort of thing, PVC in general and crafting, I'd like to invite you all, if you don't already know and you don't already belong to the PVC uh, archery and crafting community on Google+, it's great. If you have a Gmail account, you already have a Google Plus account, so you can hop on over and jump on in. There are lots of us. We're numbering approximately 100 people right now. so. Come on in, you can introduce yourself, share the projects that you're working on, tell us what you're about, what you like, ask for help. We're a really friendly, helpful bunch. It's really cool. I don't really get it, get uh, much out of it aside from satisfaction. It's just I started this little group because I enjoy being around people like me who enjoy doing stuff like this. And if you're watching this video, you might be one of those people. So come on. Come and meet me. We can all chit-chat, talk, do whatever. We occasionally have hangouts where we'll you know, go online and chat with each other live. That's fun. Get to meet people. And it's always so much different to actually talk to them face-to-face -face rather than just in messages or in YouTube comments. More personal. So feel free to stop in anytime. Feel free to lurk if you just want to pop in and read what's going on. But we, we do love it when people jump in and participate. It's always great. So feel free, by all means. See, I missed a little spot of white there, so I'm going to try and fix that right here. There we go. 
pretty good. How we doing? Halfway done, huh? Like I said, this part's a lot faster. The other detail work took about, I wanna say a half an hour, maybe per limb. Could've gone a little faster, but again, this is practice and this is only the second bow of this type that I've done, so I, I'm getting practice, and I think I'm getting better with each bow that I make. I certainly am getting better with the Turkish style designs that I'm doing. It's just becoming more natural, and I really am enjoying doing that. So Ken Holm a wonderful gentleman down from Florida suggested that I get myself a birthday present of a book, Adam Karpovich's, or Karpovich, I'm not sure how he says it, but a book on Turkish archery and composite bows. Aha! Good thinking, I already had the book, but that's all part of my project. This summer, and this time, I think I mentioned it before that I was going to do it, this time I really mean it. I've accumulated enough wood of various kinds that I'm uh, going to buy some horn, probably Gemsbach horn, and maybe some water buffalo horn, and I'm going to build some real composite bows. Some of them will be in a Turkish style, some of them will not be. To be totally honest with you, I only want one composite bow. I want to make one that works, that's beautiful, that makes me really happy, and then the others, who knows what I'll do with. You know, you may find them up on eBay or Etsy or something like that if they turn out. I don't expect to turn out even a single bow. You know, I'm keeping my expectations as low as reasonable. I understand that making a composite bow, particularly the, the more stressed kinds that appeal to me, that is the ones with lots of reflex in the limbs, and oh man, those have horrifying track records for first-time builders. That is why I would practically, uh, give my left hand to go over an apprentice with either Adam or maybe Jem Donnez in Turkey. There are some wonderful master builders out there. That would be just the experience of a lifetime, even to meet some of these people. Fortunately, you can interact with them online on some of the, the primitive archery forums, and that's always a good experience. Adam, in particular, has been amazingly helpful to uh, one of the other builders that I've seen going through his first, second, third, fourth attempts at building a composite bow. I think he's on his maybe third or fourth attempt, but this is spanning several years, and Adam has been providing feedback and helping him out. Just what an amazing guy. The home stretch is near. I can, I can smell it, and I'm really, really anxious to be done. My neck is getting cramped. This is what I mean. When you're doing this, take a break. Don't kill yourself. Just don't push yourself too hard. Because you do find yourself in unusual postures, straining your eyes, stuff like that. I'm working in lower light than normal, so all of these things contribute to fatigue. Do a limb, go take a walk, right? I'm telling you, you'll feel better. Oh boy, here it comes. 
And I am finished with this portion of the project. I can then move back to the other limb and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the color that I'm using. Let me show you my bowl. Okay, here's the bowl. I've got black, some old dried paint, just ignore that. Black, dried now. White, still semi-liquid, and the tannish brownish. I'm going to go ahead and mix the, some of the tannish brownish with the white, like so. So then we'll get a lighter shade. There, that's that's nice. So now I have that new paint, the new color. Let's go back to the old limb. It's not completely dry in all places, but I can start work at least in some spots. So let's just pr you press the brush, just squeeze out the old paint, make sure you're mixing it thoroughly. Then you can dip in and get some of the new paint. And let's go say up here. I don't want as much paint as I usually had. I don't want to fully charge it. So then I'm just going to take the left side and brush against it. Now there's another trick which I had seen. I don't know if it works real well, but I'm going to try it. I'll be taking another wet brush. And using that brush to gently feather the lighter paint that you put in. Oh, it's working beautifully. Look at that. Just so you don't have a, nice, a harsh edge. Again, this is just a little touch. Can you see that? Okay, see how right up here at the top it's hard, harsh, and then it's blended there at the bottom? So all I'm doing is I'm gently brushing the edge with a, not sopping wet, but with a brush that had been moistened. So I'll keep those two brushes separate. Go back and I can do another area. Highlight the side there. Man, this is that's really looking nice. Set the brush down, get the get the new brush and feather it. That looks about a thousand percent better. I can't tell you just how much better that looks once it's been feathered. It adds richness and depth to it rather than a harsh contrast. Man, that looks good. And just remember in the small spaces like this one, even less paint is necessary. I probably over lightened that, but that's okay. Again, just adds interest contrast, change. So I'm going to try adding very little this time. Just a nice thin stripe and feathering it and see what happens. Yeah, that looks awesome. Cool. So now you see that process. I'm going to go through, actually I'm going to let this bow dry a little bit more as I should. And then I'm going to repeat the process in both of these. I'm then going to take some pictures. I'll post that on my website, on the, the blog, on Google Plus, and all sorts of places. And you can follow along. Thanks so much for watching.